Ladies and gentlemen, we are back with some SummerSlam predictions. SummerSlam 2023. Maybe the most stacked card WWE has had year to date, in my opinion. I don't know about you guys, but there's a lot of talent on this card with a lot of great matches and a lot of over people who deserve pushes. I think we could all agree. You know why I like SummerSlam? Why is that? Because there's absolutely no ramifications for bad booking. This because there, you're really not doing shit until the Rumble. So this is the time that you get to see a lot of heel turns and a lot of pop-ups. That's why I always get excited for SummerSlam. It's always a great card. It's usually always a great time. And we're starting off with maybe uh, a match that could uh, steal the show in some ways with Logan Paul versus Ricochet. Uh, two high flyers who've had moments at uh, Royal Rumble and Ricochet finally pulled up the thing where he does the front flip over the rope and landed like in front of Logan Paul. It's so sick. It's so sick. Um, who you got and why? We'll start with you, Nick. I, I, I get all the hype for Logan Paul, and you, I mean, you, you bring him there for the pop and everything. But I got to go with Ricochet. I feel like you're matching him perfectly with a high flyer. You're matching him perfectly with a guy with charisma and everything. And you just got to, you got to do something with the guy, man. I'm tired of every time as a casual wrestling fan of the group. When I turn it on, I see him, and he's still the same place he was months ago whenever I watched it again. So I'm going to go with my boy Ricochet. Yeah. Zach? Now, now I feel the same way about Nick, but I don't think Ricochet is going to win. Logan Paul's there for money, so you got to fucking get your cash from the cow. Logan Paul's – I mean, even if it's a screwy finish, a cheat or something, uh, I think Logan Paul wins it. I mean, if you look back at his, like, match history thus far, he hasn't won a match in quite some time. So, he lost I mean, to Roman. Yep. He lost, he lost to, to Seth. Oh. Uh, well, yes. Yeah. Um, like, he, he hasn't strung together a win in quite some time, and if they're going to start actually booking him to be believable as, like, a, a megastar, he's got to win. And it's got to be at a marquee event, and SummerSlam is one of the top four. So All Ricochet needs is to be screwed over, but he needs a highlight. If Ricochet yeah. could leave the show with mm -hmm. the highlight of the night, then he's still where he belongs. You know what I mean? 100%. So he'll be fine. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I got, Like I said, I got Logan Paul, though. Um, Ronda Rousey versus Shayna Baszler in an MMA fight rules match. This is interesting, but if I may... Um, Shayna Baszler wins this match. There's no way she doesn't win this match. A, because Ronda's on her way out. B, because Triple H loves Shayna Baszler. And C, we need a dominant woman to contend for a title. Like, are we positive this is Ronda's last match, though? I'm almost positive. There's no way that they're going to do an MMA rules match and then have Shayna go, go under. I just think that there's a way to... Like, what does MMA rules mean? I think it's going to be a fight. But I'm saying, how do you finish? That. I, uh, because dog, if I, I don't know. This, if I was booking this and it was just a regular match, then I would do the match never even really starts because they just fight. You know what I'm saying? Like, and then before, it's knockout? No. Like, they would just fight and then they would book something for down the line. Like a Lions did match or something. You know what I mean? A Lions Den match. Yeah, you don't remember those from back in the day, though, Ken Shamrock matches? Homie, I'm like 20. I don't know what the oh, you're talking well, about. I can't help you. <laughs> I knew what you were talking about. I was like, I barely remember that. Nick, uh, sorry, Zach, who do, you, who do you got? I got Ronda. Okay. Nick? I, I just have a feeling. Ronda's hard to beat, bro. She is like, hard, to, hard to book against her. And, and I'm not convinced that she's leaving after this. So I'll take Ronda. Okay. Nick? Um, I'm going to go with Shayna. I, I think this is a match that we, of course, months ago talked about that they had to book and we were hyped for it. But I think you said it best. Triple H loves Shayna. You see the what she did for NXT when she was there. And I just feel that pushing her would mean a lot more than Ronda. I mean, Ronda got the boot in UFC and still got a pop. I mean, she's one of those that's going to fluctuate like a Lacey Evans to me where it's like, eh, okay, eh, okay, fiddle out. So I think you got to push Shayna at, at this point going forward. 
I will say that if you have been paying attention, the uh, the video packages and montages and shit is, have been excellent for this match. They've been like that's one of the small things that's, that matters to like a casual wrestling fan is like the video package that like explains everything that happens. They have been fantastic on this one. It's Attitude Era esque. It's so good. Um, real quick before we get into this next match, do you guys think it's crazy to call Brock Lesnar Mr. Summerslam? Because oh. if you think about it. He's main evented like eight or nine straight SummerSlams. Like if you, here, I'll, I'll look it up while you guys think about it. Because if you if you think about, I get what you're saying. Because I mean, if you think about it, he beat the crap out of fucking John Cena. Yep. Dominantly. It's, yep. SummerSlam is when he bled Randy Orton. Yep. I mean, he's the dude with the tractor who flipped the ring. I, I, I get it. I so mean, he, go ahead. It's either him or Randy. I, 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 think, I think Randy and the Undertaker are tied with SummerSlam matches, but I get what you're saying. Like, Brock has those wow moments. So, last year, it was Rock, uh, Roman versus Brock. Obviously, the tractor spot. Um, in 2019, Brock versus Seth Rollins. In 2018, it was Brock versus Roman. 2017, it was Brock versus Strowman versus Reigns versus Samoa Joe. The year before that, it was Brock versus Orton. The year before that, it was Brock versus Undertaker. The year before that, it was John Cena versus Brock Lesnar. And then it skipped a year. Brock Lesnar versus Triple H in a no disqualification match. And then, I mean, it goes back to uh, before he left for the UFC. Uh, like, I think he beat The Rock at SummerSlam for the belt, didn't he? I'm pretty sure. I'm, I'm scrolling back right now. Uh, yeah, you're right. He's Mr. SummerSlam. I, I, yeah, and it was in 2002, Rock versus Brock Lesnar for the Undisputed title. Like, yeah. the dude's just fucking insane at SummerSlam for some reason. <laughs> I don't know why, he just shows up and pops off every time. Well, the, basically, by that logic, we all just picked that match. <laughs> Cody don't have a shot tomorrow. <laughs> well, I mean, great segue. Cody, Cody Rhodes versus Brock Lesnar in the trilogy. I mean, if they're going to finish the story, Brock's kind of getting old. Nick, who you got? It, it's like it, it feels like all right you took the record from undertaker so now i'm gonna put the next guy over type of thing and and brock has said it he's he's already older he wants to help push people forward in his sense of it now if he really means that because we've seen brock say that and then do a whole 180 but I, i'm gonna i'm gonna go with cody and think that he has a flying chance even though if i'm totally wrong if I'm doing DraftKings betting, I'm going Brock. But, yeah, I'm going to go with Cody. I got Brock. Uh, I think Cody's easier to read. And I mean, for one, you just said it. Brock don't really lose at SummerSlam. And, two, if Cody were to get his push, it'd be a, a WrestleMania thing. The fact that Cody was able to take the L from Roman at WrestleMania and still hold that babyface moniker, like, kind of seamlessly, I think he can afford to do it again right now for Brock because it's Brock. I I agree to a sense, but also if you think about it, right, would a loss here hurt Brock Lesnar in any way? A little bit. I don't think so because I think Brock's Teflon. I think he's at that stage where when Brock Lesnar loses, we're like, holy shit, this dude just beat Brock Lesnar. Like, we're not like, yeah. wow. Brock Lesnar I'm got just so used to his you know? L's being so far few between. That I mean, he lost the match to Cody already. I just don't see it happening two times. Yeah, I mean, I I understand what you're saying. I'm pretty sure that Cody Rhodes wins tomorrow, though, if I'm a betting man. But I can understand why Brock would win. We just went over it that he's Mister SummerSlam. So. But I am a Cody Rhodes fan, so I'm with you. Like, I would be super excited to see it, but I also don't know what that leads to next for Cody to beat Brock. Adrenaline in my soul. Something, something. Cody Rhodes. Uh, SummerSlam Battle Royale, which is sponsored by Slim Jim. Mm. Step to a Slim Jim. Well, you. see, me and Nick had our pick earlier. We were thinking until you ruined it. I ruined it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I was all in on the LA Night thing until you ruined it. Okay. So now that I've ruined your pick, Nick, who you got? Who's all in this again? So let me ask you this. Okay, go ahead. What is the benefit of winning this battle royal? Momentum, I guess. You you, you get get, get your hand raised. Okay. You get free Slim Jims for a year. So the one person that I think is not being used properly, obviously, 
I want to say Shinsuke because he's my favorite wrestler, I think. But Karrion Cross has to do something. Like, he's doing absolutely nothing. <laughs> Ever since. I mean, he's fighting AJ, but it doesn't really feel like it matters right now. You see my point? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've been saying the same thing. He came down and he put a he put the fucking the the thing in front of Roman Reigns, turned it over, said TikTok, and we've never seen that happen since. <laughs> he had a good feud with Drew McIntyre after that. That was it. If that was a, a feud, I don't know about good. I mean, they had a good case. It certainly happened. It happened. It, I mean, yeah. it was <laughs> if you look back in the history books, it did happen. I don't know whether I want to go back and watch it, but it happened. I forgot. But what do you do with him? Put him in the faction, dude. Let him let him have his own like fucking I don't know, like terrorize like group. Black type of thing. Yeah, give him a house of black type shit. I- introduce trios titles that you put on the show once every three weeks and then do that. Or we can just let LA Knight win and the world gets what it wants. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so there's you know AJ Styles, there's Karen Cross, there's a bunch of other people. Yeah, but he already said it. LA yeah. Knight. Yeah. Yeah, we're putting over the guy. Got to ride the wave while he's hot. L.A. Knight, the mouthpiece. He has the wrestling. He's older, so I need to – don't waste him. I would like this to be a – like the type of match where L.A. Knight's on fire, throwing everybody out the ring, right? And then we get to the end, and he throws the last guy, and we're like, wow, L.A. Knight won something. That's great. And then Austin Theory sneaks in from behind because he never got eliminated and throws him over. Like that, mm. that kind of cheap heat, I like that. So I'm going to go Austin Theory and hope that that plays out exactly Eight like down, that. Down. I hate that fucking song. <laughs> it's so bad. All right. Uh, Intercontinental Championship match, Gunter versus Drew McIntyre, which should be a great, great match. Oh, I um, think that might steal the show. Zach, who do you got? <sighs> this one's a tough one. I'm going to go Gunter. I don't think they're ready to take that belt off of him yet. Gunta. I think at some point it has to lead to a a chance of him going after Roman. I really feel that way. I know he said he didn't care about that, but what's next for Gunter? He cares. I feel that way too. Like, how do you not want to be the heavyweight? Yeah. And if you put the belt on Drew, like it doesn't make Gunter any closer to getting to Roman, you know? Not at all. In fact, I think it actually brings him down. That's like my point. point. Yeah. Um, Nick, who you got? I got Gunther. Uh, uh, this guy here has probably been one of the one guys I keep watching when he wrestles. Mm-hmm. Um, those matches with Sheamus were mm-hmm. amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, I think you said it best. If you're going to put him – I mean, he he's making the Intercontinental Championship prestige again like it's always been. But if you want to put him up there with Roman, you have to keep him with the belt. You have to keep pushing him. So whenever it shows him and Roman, I mean, champion versus can champion I, type thing. Can I ask you a question about the Intercontinental belt? Mm. Am I the only one in favor of going back to an older belt? Because the one they have now is god awfully ugly. I think, like it's the, it. I think it is the worst belt in professional wrestling. I think the yellow one was disgusting. The old one? I don't. The Ultimate Warrior one? Yeah. No, I don't. I, I like that silhouette of a belt. The, what they have now is god awful. It looks like the AEW World Championship. I hate it. it is you, hate the, you hate the AEW World Championship? A little bit. A little <laughs> bit. That's fair. That's fair. It looks uh, like those things that my grandma used to wear back in the 80s when they would put those big belts over their coat, their jacket. I was like, what I, is this shit? They, they should mm-hmm. make, like, just the big ass, like, circle Internet Continental Championship again. Yeah. Yeah. I would be cool. down with that. Um, I don't think that WWE is going to take the belt off of him until he breaks the record for that honky talk impersonator dog. Um, so <laughs> I think he's going to help it for a little while longer. Um, however, I do think that this is going to be a great match. And I think that Imperium is significantly underused and they need to have some tag team title matches soon. Because I like Ludwig Kaiser and Giovanni Vinci. What um, if Ludwig turns on Gunter and calls never, him the belt? That never. Never. What? That oh, is no. like Starsky shooting Hutch, okay? So? That would never happen. It's like Iron Man beating up Captain they America. Would... That would never happen. I sound like a, 
like a like a ridiculous little seven year old right now who's defending dare you. you. Say that Zach. that I would never you. happen. That's my Down syndrome cousin. <laughs> <laughs> All right, never could happen. If it did, it would be horrible because I think Ludwig would, would get lost in the shuffle. But uh, that's just me because they already have a ton of talent that they're not utilizing correctly, and I think he's talented. Word. So. They need strong tag teams. Start building them. Um, women's championship. Uh, Asuka versus Bianca Belair versus Charlotte Flair. I, I call Bianca. You got Bianca winning? I think Bianca does some shady shit and gets her belt back. Ooh. Okay. Well, only because I can't... Like, that would be the heel turn I would like to see, Bianca Belair. There, there was some rumblings online about... If you watch SmackDown tonight, you saw... Uh, Bobby Lashley and the Street Profits that they could be adding a female into that faction. If it is, Bianca, well, doesn't it feel like you can't keep putting a belt on Charlotte? You can't let her break all the records this oh, early in her career, dude. I am a strong advocate that Charlotte Flair has no character unless it's I'm the champion. That's but that it. was what Ric Flair was for for the for a no. But he was a part of the Horsemen, like, and he like he, he was a part with of with like, the belt. <laughs> Right, but I'm talking about just the faction itself. Like he created something different. <laughs> We're not just going to remember Rick Time, Rick Flair as the 16-time world champion. We're going to remember him as part of the Four Horsemen, right? And I don't think the WWE really cares to have that belt on on Oscar. I think they did it because it was long overdue, and she kind of needed it. Um, the fact that people don't understand a majority of what the hell she's saying—that's the problem. I agree. It's the same reason that Shinsuke didn't win the title at Mania. True. Nick, who you got? Yeah. I think uh, for that reason of Asuka not nobody knowing what she's saying um, for sure. I, I think Bianca. I think a heel turn is what we need. Um, Zach said in the beginning, this is the perfect time, SummerSlam, for heel turns and everything else. So I think it just works out perfectly for the faction also. And it just makes sense. Um, so I agree Charlotte doesn't need the belt. I agree. Asuka doesn't really feel like a champion that we can have at all times, per se. And I also feel like Bianca's character is stale, and I don't see them turning her heel because of the merch sales. Which is why I think Io Sky is walking out as the women's champion. Ooh. I think we get a cash in tomorrow. And I think it happens here. You're really not in the same boat. They don't know what the hell she's saying either. No, but I, I think Io is more <laughs> impressive in the ring than Asuka is. I, I, oh no, their no. styles are different. I'll give Very you much that. So. But like, you can watch Eel Sky and have Bailey be her mouthpiece, and you don't have to like do that. And I, there is a level of violence that Oscar can do to people that is not seen by many women. But it's not; it doesn't translate well to live TV. People don't respond to it as well. And Whereas Eel is throwing her body off the top rope to the outside. We're like, holy shit, she's a daredevil. I like that. And and well, you look at the Oscar fans. Go- like, look at the fans when with EO. Like, they resonate a lot more with her than with Asuka. And, I mean, also, theme song. Way better. Ooh, dopest theme song. Dopest theme song. It's so good. It's so good. Well, then they just need to let Asuka go back to choking bitches out. I agree. We need, we, I think Asuka needs to go fucking psycho. Even more so than she already is. Stop talking. The fact that she... And just choke people. Well, the fact that she came back like evil Asuka and she hasn't been like... Evil. choking people yeah. out, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like she should be sneaking up on people in the back and just choking them. That'd out. be great. That'd be amazing. It'd be like, it'd be like that one night where Randy Orton just RKO'd everybody. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, we got two more matches left. Um, do you want the Raw Championship or the SmackDown Championship? Which one do you want? Uh, let's do Raw. Okay. Seth Rollins versus Finn Balor in the Seven Years You've Been My Bitch match for the World Heavyweight Championship. Um, this has got a lot of like emotion behind it. I'm a big Finn Balor fan. I, I'm telling y'all right now, Finn Balor is walking out as world champion tomorrow. I would like that to be true. I really would like that to be true. I'm just, what does that say about what the WWE thinks about Seth if they allow that to happen? Well, Seth recently said in an interview, and I, I, I read into a lot of the real life shit that happens behind wrestling. Right, Seth's hurt. He's got a knee problem. He needs back surgery. If he gets it done now, he'll be back in time for Mania, and he'll be fully healthy. It, there would be a, a poetic justice to, 
to uh, Finn taking that belt off of Seth. Let him be the man for a little bit, and then inevitably, and then you've got a feud within Judgment Day, yep. and that's a good way to get Finn Balor away from them and have JD McDonough probably... be the guy who takes over. Ooh, I don't know about He's that. Finn's protege. It makes only the most sense. I don't like that. I love it. I can't have two bitches on there, Dom and JD. What the <laughs> hell? Hey, don't talk about Dom, all right? He's a lucha legend. Dirty Dom, bro. He's a lucha legend, bro. Hey. I heard the rumored Bray Wyatt, the leader of the Judgment Day. I don't like that at all. Keep That's him the fuck terrible. away. I'm going with my boy Finn. Give him justice. He didn't deserve to lose that belt ever. No, Seth's dirty ass fucking got him hurt. Okay. Yeah, he fucked his shoulder up. Yeah, but still, Finn never got his 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 due on the main roster with a heavyweight belt yet. No, and, it's that time. And he had a pop and a half when he originally won that belt. Like back in the day, yeah. he got picked to Raw, and we were like, "Oh shit, Finn's getting his his rub here." Like we're seeing it. He wins the title over Roman and Seth, and we're like, "Finn's the guy now." And then seven years later, we're looking at it again, and all WWE has to do is not fuck this up. Ooh, wouldn't it be dope if? Uh... Finn wins the bat, the belt, and then the Fiend comes after the Demon. Fiend. And then it kind of makes the Judgment Day stay together, but Finn never trusts Dame, Damien. We can't say. So then it's like two storylines in one. Could be, sick. Could be sick. That'd be nice. It's like a novella. You got you you got Finn Balor, Zach. I'm gonna take Finn Balor. Like you that. persuaded. I like that. And finally, in the undisputed Universal Championship match between. Roman Reigns and the man who can't help but say Uso at the end of every sentence, Jay Uso, in a tribal rules match. Not sure what the hell that means, but Roman's not losing that belt to Jay Uso. I don't see how that could happen. So, go ahead, Nick. No, that's about it. No, Nick, Nick go ahead. <laughs> Um, I'm not going against my travel chief as of this moment, so Roman Reigns. Back. So, in my head, I think they're going to like keep Jimmy at the same level as Roman. Not as though like they're going to make him like, oh, he's the face of the WWE and he needs to be in Hollywood and matches and TVs and shit. But I think this match is going to be like neck and neck towards the end. Solo isn't going to interfere. That'd be too predictable. Jimmy's not going to turn you know? on Jay. That's not going to happen. Um, no. So, I feel like there could be... Rikishi. <laughs> Rikishi would be a sick one. And that was the second but one. But he, he he turns on Jimmy. Yeah, on I mean, Jay. on Jay. Yeah, right. On Jay. Mm, be... Hollywood is on strike right now. Right. The Rock's available. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But I think if you wanted to give somebody a push, who's like a Samoan, why not give Ava Rain, who's The Rock's daughter, a push to the main roster and have her be in the door? I don't like that. I love it. Nah, I don't I like it. that. I love it. I, I like the Rikishi storyline. You more want his because, dad to turn on him? Because then Rikishi being with Roman Reigns, like, that makes Jimmy have to go. He already over there. got a fat walrus looking motherfucker on the side. Well, now you got two. There's five old linemen, bro. So you're three short. <laughs> so if, if Rikishi's with Roman, then that makes Jimmy automatically go over there because he can't turn against his dad. So then it kind of isolates Jay even more. But And then you sympathize with him, so it keeps him on that level you're talking about. You know what I'm saying? I do. I also think we're over screwy finishes. And if Roman's going to win, I think he should do it clean. You know how I would play this match out? Wow. Do you remember when Roman faced Brock at the first WrestleMania? I think it was 32. Brock ran into the pole, busted himself open, and then it basically made it believable that Roman could beat him. I want something like that to happen in this match, where Roman kind of hurts himself and it gives Jay the oppor- gives people the opportunity to think Jay could win. Give That's him, what I want to Give him that hope and then just... Yeah. yeah, that hope at the expense like of Roman. Ro- not like Roman's over. holding Jay and he's on the outside of the ring by the ropes. And Jay's on the inside, and Solo goes to spike him, and then Jay ducks, and Solo hits him with the spike and goes to the table or some shit. Is that what you're saying? Or something like that, or Roman goes for an early Superman punch, and he twists his knee up, and then he beats the shit out of his knee with a chair. Or something. Like, you got to do something to kind of, like, handicap Roman. 
Fair. I'm taking Jay Uso. Ooh. Mm. My cousin. I, I, <laughs> I've been wanting Jay to get his shine for a minute. And he, I guess he is by even being in the main event right now. But Hey. I like I like Jay, so if he wins, I'd I'd be shocked though. I'd be really shocked. I think he holds it for maybe a week, but what's the point? What do you mean? What's the point of taking the belt off Roman for Jay to hold it for a week? That's that's the only argument. Is like if you're gonna give it to Jay, Jay's got to hold it for a while, right? Yes, to the and he, it's not believable. To the Rumble? No, till Mania. No, and because that Cody Mania. Cody's finishing the story. I don't, I don't think he finishes his story. More fight about I don't think he finishes his story with uh with Roman. It has to be Roman. If it's not Roman, it's it's not poetic justice. I think he actually wants that other belt though. The World Heavyweight Championship? Yes. He wants that belt in itself, the silhouette, that old big gold. Like he wants that. Could be. Could be. Regardless, we will be live for the uh, entire show tomorrow, WWE SummerSlam. Uh, make sure you stop by. Um, if you haven't already done so, like this video. Tell us why we're wrong or right, uh, whether you agree or disagree. I'm sorry to Paul Heyman for calling you a fat walrus. Um, and uh, uh, if you haven't, ar- let me talk to you. If we haven't already subscribed, do so. We'll see y'all tomorrow. Peace. Peace. How much I'm working for this? I swear my dreams are too important.